episode of Freaks and Psychos, the Disability and Horror Podcast, where the freaks shall inherit the earth. I'm your host, Andred. Unless I find a co-host, this will be something of a solo cast with a revolving door of guests. Anyone interested in being on an episode, please get in touch. To give you a general idea of what this podcast is, I will be delving into all the issues related to disability in horror movies, whether that be disabled characters, disabled actors and filmmakers, cultural attitudes about disability, and issues of access in filmmaking and film viewing. The plan right now is to alternate between three different kinds of episodes. One will be about a classic horror movie, the next will be about a newer horror movie, and the third will be a themed episode, which will be about a particular film cycle or period of film, a disability topic, or a type of disability. I'm recording this in September 2020, which is a difficult time for me personally and for the world at large. We're living in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has taken hundreds of thousands of lives, devastated our economy, and endangered people with disabilities and others in marginalized groups. Here in the U.S., we are facing political divides crystallized like never before, as management of the virus has become a political issue. Black Lives Matter protests over police violence and racial injustice have caused ripples in our social fabric. I say all this only to acknowledge the troubled times we're living in and hope that we can help each other through them and hopefully have some fun while we're at it. Now let me stake my claim for the significance of disability and horror as a topic. It's not just a trivial part of the genre, but an integral aspect that has shaped some of the most iconic books and movies. I hope that you will give this podcast a chance, because I am truly just a horror fan trying to understand his favorite genre better. If you've not thought much about disability and horror, let me throw out a few examples of how actual disabled people have helped to shape very important horror films. Lon Chaney, who played iconic characters such as Quasimodo in The Phantom of the Opera and the silent films of the 1920s, was born to deaf parents and, using sign language with them, made him skilled in pantomime. Todd Browning's Freaks used actual sideshow performers with disabilities. For his role as Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Gunnar Hansen observed intellectually disabled children. John Carpenter's inspiration for Michael Myers came while visiting a friend in a mental hospital, where he saw the quote-unquote blank stare of a schizophrenic. Tom Savini said that he designed young Jason to look like a mongoloid, a derogatory term for people with Down syndrome in the original Friday the 13th. Makeup artist David Miller based the look of Freddy Krueger's disfigured face on photographs of actual burn victims. So, aside from how we might think about the representation of disability in the characters and films mentioned, It's clear that disability inspired many of horror's heavy hitters. In this introductory episode, I will give you my thoughts on why I'm talking about disability in the horror genre, what I mean by disability, the ways that debates about disability parallel debates about the definition of horror, an overview of the history of disability and horror from gothic fiction to recent films, and I'll be playing a few clips of people giving me their thoughts on what disability and horror means to them. I will also have two recurring segments, Psycho Sounds, in which I will recommend another horror podcast, and Freaky Fic, in which I will give a mini-review of a work of horror literature. First, I'm going to share a little bit about myself. I live 